After years of no real great big players and even a few exits from the North American market, Carl Pays Nothing has now officially arrived on US shores and it's ready to make some waves. How though does the brand new Phone 2 stack up against its lookalike predecessor? Well, let's find out. Firstly, there are some big and that includes size changes for the Nothing Phone 2. This latest device has a larger chassis at 162.1 by 76.4 millimeters and is now 8.6 millimeters thick. And this means an increased 201 total gram mass, while the Phone 1 comes in at 159.2 by 75.8 millimeters and is 8.3 millimeters thick. The Phone 1 comes with a 6.55 inch display and the Phone 2 comes with a 6.7 inch screen which may seem minor at first but it is worth noting that the new model has 12% smaller bezels and an overall better display to boot. Of course there's a lot similar going on here but the biggest changes between these two phones are of course that it's bigger and with that better display but the most notable at least on paper is going to be that jump to last year's flagship grade SoC. The slightly larger battery is also included with a faster wired charging speed at 45 watts and more addressable LED zones with that glyph lighting interface that you can find on the rear. Of course if that's all you need to know from this video go and upgrade to the phone too but we think you should stick around as there's more nuance here to contend with and consider. So let's start from the front as the only way you can really tell the phone one and phone two apart is by the placement of the front camera and that bigger screen size as I've noted. The phone one has a hole punch camera placed in the top left while the phone two has a centered hole punch which we think is a better positioning in any way. It is worth noting though that even though it is marginally bigger at 6.7 inches, it is still capped at full HD plus resolution at 2,412 pixels by 1080 pixels. Most of this improvement though boils down to the LTPO tech which is thrown in and this allows you the ability to, to vary its refresh rate from 1 hertz to 120 hertz which will depend on the content that's displayed and overall it does work pretty well. There's also a bump to 1600 nits for the peak brightness which should be noticeable when consuming things like HDR plus content and HDR content. Nothing also continues to use a flat OLED display on its flagship phone, which we definitely applaud. And it is protecting the screen with Gorilla Glass 5 for scratch and drop protection to boot. Things though take a step up as we start to look at the internals. The biggest change, as I've already noted, is the substantial move to the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 from the Snapdragon 778G Plus, which is found in the Phone 1, which is a mid-ranger. It's an excellent upper mid-ranger at that, and it is customized for the Phone 1. The 8 Plus Gen 1 though sits firmly in flagship territory. It's definitely not the latest and greatest or even the best chip right now. That would be the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, but it sits in second position for Android phones and tablets and is an excellent choice for its price to performance ratio. With this, the Phone 2 performs noticeably better than the Phone 1. For storage and memory though, the two phones remain largely the same, although there is an extra higher storage option for the Phone 2. You can get 128, 256 gigabyte options for both, but there's a new 512 gigabytes of UFS 3.1 internal storage storage available for the Phone 2 and that's paired with 8GB or 12GB of LPDDR5 RAM. With the bump up to that new flagship chip it would have been nice to have upgrades to UFS 4.0 storage which is marginally faster and LPDDR5X RAM but this isn't necessarily a deal breaker as the performance we have to say is excellent. There's still no micro SD card slot for either of these phones for fans out there of expandable memory. It's something that we definitely see less and less of as the years go by. Other incremental upgrades from the Phone 1 to the Phone 2 include going from IP53 to IP53 IP54 for dust and water protection. Still no IP68, which means you're going to have to stay clear of bodies of water, but it should survive a minor splash. There's also an upgrade to Bluetooth 5.3 for connectivity, which means better Bluetooth connections with your devices and more 5G bands to boot, which is important given the wider global availability of this device this time around. I mean, you should have signal anywhere you end up traveling. Since the Phone 1 and Phone 2 are from the same company, the software experience is admittedly very, very similar, almost identical. Nothing OS does take vanilla Android and sprinkles in a few changes from the company themselves without trying to reinvent the wheel and we really do like that. The Phone 2 does ship though with Nothing OS 2.0 pre-installed which adds some more customization options for the home screen, the lock screen and the widgets are available to you. It's nice, but it's definitely not an essential upgrade. The Phone 1 will also receive this though, or Nothing OS 2.0 at some point in August, so the experience should hopefully equalize despite some hardware differences, which enable some extra features. Nothing also promises three years of Android updates and four years of bi-monthly security patches. Since the Phone 1 is, was launched last year, it will be supported a year less than the Phone 2, so Android 15 is gonna be the last OS build for Nothing Phone 1, while Android 16 should be the last 
full Android update for phone two. I mentioned earlier that there are some chassis size differences between these two phones. And what adds to this feeling of difference between them at least in the overall size, is how the back of the phone 2 is shaped. Nothing has added a very slight chamfer or modest curve between the metal frame and the back glass itself, which allows the phone 2 to be held a little more comfortably than the phone 1, especially if you don't have a case, something which we're sure many of you will, and that is despite an increased footprint. The transparent design language carries over from the phone 1 to the phone 2, and at least at first glance it doesn't look necessarily too different. It's all part and parcel of nothing's design language, and it's definitely something striking, and we're starting to see a few the smaller players copy that over the past few months. The phone one of course comes in white and black colors while the phone two comes in a white model which looks eerily similar to last year's and this brand new dark gray which you can see on screen. So there's no black model for this one. If you want that you're gonna have to buy a skin or an extra case. One thing that is noticeably different on the phone two from the phone one though is the glyph lighting system when you get these closer and you look and inspect them a bit more closely. The phone one started with 12 individually addressable LED zones spread across the five LED strips. The phone 2 though bumps this up to 33 individually addressable LED zones spread across 11 LED strips. This lets you have more customization options and granularity for these, open up more use cases. For example, with the essential glyph notifications, you can set some LEDs to persistently blink when you have notifications from some important apps that is, until you clear that notification on your home screen. You can also use the LEDs as countdown timers, a battery indicator, or even a volume indicator. There's third party integration with apps like Zomato and Uber, depending on on your region, letting the apps use the glyph as a countdown timer till your food or your cab arrives. It's not clear if these options will come to phone one though with nothing less 2.0, but for now, it's a nice exclusive feature that you can only get on the new model, at least for the time being. As for the cameras, nothing isn't really doing anything too experimental this year, with both of these phones having two primary rear cameras, a main wide and an ultra wide lens. The primary camera does make the jump though from the 50 megapixel Sony IMX 766 on the phone one to the 50 megapixel Sony IMX 890 on the phone too. The branding does indicate that this is quite a big jump, but the sensors are actually quite similar with both having f1.88 max apertures and a 1 over 1.56 inch sensor size and shooting one micrometer pixels. Of course, there's the obligatory OAS and EIS support thrown in there too. The only real change is that this sensor upgrade brings is the ability alongside the Qualcomm Snapdragon processor as well, the upgraded version, the ability to shoot 4K video at 60 FPS. That being said, nothing has done a great job of improving the primary rear sensors camera software and the processing on this newer phone. The phone one primary camera was quite forgettable when the device actually launched, but later software updates have really helped the camera shine a little bit brighter when you're using it in a lot of various scenarios. With the new phone too, we do hope that the company will keep improving and trying to compete more directly against the big guns in the camera space, but it's definitely not a groundbreaking camera system by any stretch of the imagination. For the rest of the cameras, as for that secondary rear ultra wide camera, both of these devices are still utilizing the 50 megapixel Samsung JM1 sensor with a max f2.2 aperture and a 1 over 2.7 inch sensor size and that 114 degree field of view. It's definitely the weaker of the two, but it's nice to have a fairly solid ultra wide angle lens available at a moment's notice. On the front though, the 16 megapixel Sony IMX 471 on the phone one is actually being replaced with a high resolution 32 megapixel Sony IMX 615 which is now capable of shooting 1080p at 60 FPS, but it should definitely warrant an upgrade there if you are someone who takes a lot of selfies and does a lot of video calling throughout the day. So the phone one did ship with a 4,500 milliamp hour battery, which can give most users around six hours of screen on time quite comfortably. And that's a barely solid day of use, I think for most people. The battery isn't exactly the highlight of that phone itself, but it works well enough to remove any unnecessary battery anxiety you might have. The Nothing phone has a marginally larger 4,700 milliamp hour battery. It's not a huge upgrade, but the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 thrown in there is also a surprisingly power efficient chip. So in tandem, it means you can expect similar battery life despite the performance gains and larger power hungry screen that is. You'd be pleased to hear that charging has improved as well on the phone 2 with 33 watts on the phone 1 versus 45 watts on the newer model. And this means a 71 minute total charge time versus a 55 minute charge time on the newer handset. Both of these phones also support 15 watt wireless charging with a supported charger and 5 watt reverse wireless 
while as charging for your accessories and the like. Neither phone comes with a charger in the box, although there is a USB-C charge cable provided and the newer version has that clear USB-C charge cable, which you really do like the look of. So you're probably wondering, should you upgrade? That is if you do have the original. Well, the Phone 2 is a meaningful upgrade over the Phone 1 and the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 is a big jump in terms of performance. But with that being said, the upgrade comes at a cost and a financial cost at that. And it may not be easy to justify for everyone. As a standalone recommendation though, both the Phone 1 and Phone 2 are great phones in their own right. If you just want clean Android and a lot less fuss. If your Phone 1 does continue to function well today, then you probably don't need to upgrade to the Phone too especially as you'll see good performance and improvements over time with those nothing os updates and you don't have to shell out good money for a new phone that doesn't seem as necessary we'd recommend using that device for another year or two as long as it serves you appropriately and you're happy with that support window there's quite a long laundry list of things that the phone 2 does better than the phone 1 at least a lot of these on paper and as a newer phone and successor to the series it makes sense to pick up if you're in the market for a new device it's not the best phone out there especially on paper but could be compelling option especially in north american markets as i know where competition isn't quite as rife i want to ask you though what do you think is a good upgrade or is this a mediocre model destined for well nothing let us know down in the comment sections below thanks for watching until next time though this is damien with android authority and i will speak to you soon